Mother Petrosaka, pray for us. And Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Dear Reverend Father, dear brothers, dear sisters, dear faithful, according to a tradition, St. Luke painted an image of Our Lady while she was still in Jerusalem. And this image was a lady holding the infant Jesus in her arms. And tradition tells us that Our Lady said to St. Luke, well, firstly, she blessed him, and she blessed the image. And she said to St. Luke, My grace will accompany this image. My grace will accompany this image. So this image is known as St. Luke's Madonna, or otherwise known in Greek as the Holy Getria, which means Lady of the Way. And it was placed in the St. Sophia Church, otherwise known as Hagia Sophia, in Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul. So it was in this beautiful basilica for a thousand years. And during this thousand years, there were many beautiful miracles that happened. One that we can relate, in 718, the Saracens had surrounded the city of Constantinople from land and from sea. The people flocked to St. Sophia and begged Our Lady to spare them. They begged Our Lady to give them hope, uh, give them help and hope. So the clergy and the people took the image from the church and processed around the town. And when they went to the waters where the fleets of the Saracens were at bay, the clergy, the, the bishop, touched the image to the water. And the water at that time was nice and calm. It became wild and ferocious. And as a consequence, the whole fleet was decimated and sunk to the sea. We turn to the image of Mother Petrosaka. Some say that it is a copy of the Holy Getria. Others say that it is based on the Holy Getria. But uh, regardless, what remains a continuation from this Holy Getria to the image of Mother Petrosaka is that the promise that Lady gave to the image of the Holy Getria, my grace will accompany this image. Our Lady's grace will be a company will be, uh, be there always in this image. This comes to the, to the fore, it comes, makes, it makes really a lot of truth when we speak about the image of Mother Petrosaka. Many, many miracles to relate, and there's obviously there's books written about the miracles of Our Lady has performed through this image, and even today through the perpetual novenas in the different countries around the world, in Singapore, Philippines, in Ireland, in Australia. Uh, and, it was, and here we pray the prayers, we don't have the full um, novena, but we still pray the prayers in the novena. And many, many miracles have happened through this image, this beautiful image. What makes this image different to other miraculous images is that when we speak about a miraculous image, such as a lady of Chester Hover, that image, the original image, is miraculous. And it's performed many miracles through that original image. But it is said, and the tradition tells us, that Our Lady's grace carries on in every single image of Mother Petrosaka that is blessed and is honored properly. So we can say, conclude that every image of Our Lady that holds a special place in your, in your household or in your, in your vehicles, whatever, if it's, if it's honored properly, that image will be miraculous. The spirit and the miraculous power will reside in that particular image. Carrying on what Our Lady said to St. Luke, accompanying the image, my grace will be with this image, my grace will accompany this picture. I'd like to speak about the image of Mount Pajasaka. It has a very, very long history, but I'd like to pick up the history from the point where the image is given to the Redemptress in Rome. So now we fast forward to the 1400s, and we find that the image was in Crete, and it was stolen by a merchant of Crete, and he took it, holy larceny, took it with him to Rome. And due to the fact that he stole this image, he con contracted a disease, and he died. But before he died, he had a friend in Rome who he was living with. He told him, he told his friend, take this image to a church, take it to a place that's more honorable. So the man agreed to do that. But once his wife had seen the image, she wanted the image to stay in the house. Um, so they kept it in the house for nine months. And after the period of nine months, a lady appeared to this Roman man and said, 
take this image to a more honourable place. I don't know why, but he didn't listen. So she came again, he appeared to him again and told him again, take this image to a more honourable place. And for some reason, he, for whatever reason, he didn't listen. So she appeared a third time and said, if you don't take this image to a more honourable place, you're going to die. And so surely after that, you would think he would listen. His wife, he told his wife this, this kind of scenario, and she said, no, we'll just keep it, we'll keep it a bit, a bit longer. And she was very attached to it. And it's a cautionary tale to, about husbands. If you listen to a wife or a lady, listen to a lady first. <laughs> um, finally, he, he dies because he didn't obey the behest, a request of our lady. So the mother or the wife or the Roman realized her mistake. But still, she was still attached to this image. And you can understand why. But um, when heaven comes down and tells you to do something, you do it. So our lady appears to the daughter of the Roman who died and said to the daughter, tell your mother to, to take this image to a church, take this image to St. Matthew's, and this is in Rome, the church of St. Matthew's, that stands between a lady of St. Mary Major and St. Saviour's. Name is escape me now. John Lateran. So she realized her mistake and realized she was the cause of her husband's death. And she obeyed the behest of Our Lady, took the image to the church, uh, St. Matthew's, and it was run by a group of uh, monks. That they were called Augustine monks. The, the, they were of the tradition of St. Augustine. And uh, the monks had received the image, and they placed it at, a, at the altar. And this is now March 27th, 1499. Pope Alexander VI had given the title a mother of Perpetual Sucker. So for 300 years, a mother perpetual sucker remained in this church of St. Matthew, and it was, became very popular amongst the Romans, but also throughout all Christendom. And many miracles flowed through this image. And this, this is the nature of this image, really, is that it's a miraculous image. And if we pray to a lady through this image under the title of Mother Petra Sucker, then she's going to pour through for you. Now we fast forward 300 years, 1798. So Napoleon, he, he goes, he, he's, he's taking over Europe. He sends his general, General um, Massina, and he goes into Rome. And in order to assert the anti-Catholic sentiments, he has a list of churches he wants to destroy in Rome. And St. Matthew's, with this image, is placed, is on the hit list. So the Augustinian fathers realize, okay, this is going to happen. They, need, they know the end is imminent. So they take the image and they, and they take it to another a location called Santa Maria of Postarula and they hide the image in that church. So the general Messina goes through, he destroys St. Matthew's and destroys other churches around Rome. Now we fast forward again to 1840. 1840 we know that the image is there in the church of Santa Maria de Postarula. So this is the connection though with the Redemptorist. There was a brother of this monastery, this Augustinian monastery, and his name is Brother Augustine. And he was a, a brother who did a lot of jobs around the monastery. And one of his jobs was to be a, to teach the altar servers how to serve. There was a young lad there who was his favorite, and his name was Michael Markey. And Michael Markey um, was, since was his favorite, his brother Augustine used to tell him, there's this beautiful image in the sacristy, it's miraculous, and it used to be a St. Matthew's. Don't forget this. So he told him, how, so, so Brother Augustine told Michael Markey the history about this image, how it was miraculous, how it was, uh, you know, it was, it was in that St. Matthew's church for 300 years, and they have the whole story about it. Fast forward again, Brother Augustine dies, and we, Michael Markey, becomes a redemptress. Now it's 1918, sorry, 1859, and we, Michael Markey, becomes a priest of the redemptress order. A few years before he became a priest, though, the Pope invited the Redemptorists to come to Rome and they wanted to build a church somewhere. So the Pope gave them the location where St. Matthew's used to stand. So they built a church in honor of St. Fonsus. And as they're going through the chronicles of the location of St. Matthew's church, they realized there was this miraculous image that was once on that site. So they did a bit of inquiries, um, but they think they came up empty. Now we'll fast forward into 1863, a couple of years later. 
there is a, a priest, a Jesuit priest, and he's given conferences around Rome. And the, conference, the subject of the conferences was images, or, or famous images, miraculous images of Rome. So he gives his, gives his conferences, and one of the images that he speaks about is the lost Mother of Petra Soccer icon. And it's, it's, he's lamenting the fact that it's, it's disappeared for 70 years. After the, the invasion of Napoleon and his army, the image has disappeared. You can manage, imagine the surprise of Father Marky when he finds out about this particular story. He found, he found out about it because he was in Rome at the time, and he realizes, I know what this is, I know what it is, I know the name, and I know the location. So he was beside himself. He and his, uh, his superior general went to the Pope and asked for this image. So we know, uh, we know the whereabouts of this miraculous image, and we know it used to be in St. Matthew's. Can we ha please have it and, um, and put it in our church? But, you know, obviously uh, St. Augustine and his, and his sons had an attachment to this image, so they wanted to keep it. So there's a bit of a, a back and forth there, but eventually they relented, and the Pope gave permission to the Redemptors to have this image. So there was a procession from Santa Maria de Apostolura to now St. Francis, where it used to be the site of St. Matthew. And many miracles happened through that procession. It's on one side of the room to, to, to the other. One particular striking miracle is that there was a young boy, four-year-old, who was, had a, a brain ailment, and he was very sick at the point of death, in fact. And the mother, as she saw the procession go by, she, she, she put a wee boy outside the, the window and asked that lady to intercede for him. And he was instantaneously healed. So where's the original image? It's now in Rome, at St. Alphonsus, where the place of Saint, where St. Matthew's was. And it's been there since 1866. Pope Pius IX was the Pope who gave them permission to take the image and to, and to honour it in their church. One thing the Pope told the Redemptors, though, um, he gave him a commission, he gave him a command. He says, make her known throughout the whole world. Make this image known throughout the whole world. Uh, and they've done a good job at that, actually. The Redemptors have made her known. And one of the most popular devotions to a lady is a mother of perpetual succor. As I mentioned earlier, there, all this, there is this thing called the Novena, and it's referred to as the Perpetual Novena because it's prayed every week in honor of Our Lady. And I've been to one of the big ones um, in Singapore, where it's every, I think every, every two hours, starting from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and many people flock, thousands of people flock each, each, each two, every two hours in order to hear about a lady, in order to honor her and to venerate her as she ought to be venerated. There are many, there are big uh, devotions in the Philippines where thousands of people go there as well, as well as India. Um, so this is considered the biggest devotion to Our Lady because of the novena to her, a perpetual novena in honor of Our Lady. One must ask themselves, why, why did the Lady choose the Redemptress and why St. Francis and his sons? And one answer I can come up with is that St. Francis wrote this, he's the, the founder of the Redemptress, our founder, and he wrote a book called The Glories of Mary. And it's, a, it's a quite extensive book about Our Lady. It's about 800 pages. And it, it's basically that. It's the glories of Our Lady. And in this book, Our Lady, uh, the teaching of, of St. Francis really harmonizes with the message and the image of a mother of Pachasaka. At one time in the book, he says this, these words, Mary's only thought after seeking the glory of God was to succor the miserable. So after God's glory, the second thought that a lady has is to succor us, to help us, to aid us, to be there uh, for our every need. If only we were to turn to her and ask her for her help. St. Francis teaches that she is the mediatrix of all graces. All graces flow through her. Obviously it comes from God, but goes through her hands. And St. Francis in Glorious American declared this quote from his book, Glorious of Mary, if the intercession of the saints, and especially that of Mary, is good and useful, it is also good and useful always to obtain it. Therefore, we should always have a, a devotion to a mother of perpetual succor. Remember the words of Our Lady, my grace will accompany this image. 
leave you one last thought. In the life of St. John Vianney, he was tested um, as a seminarian to go on to become a priest. And the Vicar General of the Archdiocese um, tested St. John Vianney, and he didn't make the mark. So he, uh, he, he asked the director of the seminary uh, for an interview. And they were discussing his uh, academic failures, but then by a moment of grace, the, the vicar general said to the director of the seminary, does he love Mary? Does he love Our Lady? And the director of the seminary says, of course he does. Every, everybody knows that he loves Mary, he loves Our Lady. And this is the question I put forward to you. Do you love a lady and how do you show and manifest that love to her? Okay, I'm not telling you to go out and and you know, be ostentatious with your devotion to a lady. But, but, I'm, but what I'm trying to get the point to is that you have to show some external devotion to her in order to show that you love her. We can say we can say many prayers and say, I love you, lady, I love you, but we have to put the money where our mouth is and show and manifest it with our actions. Not for our own glory, but for the glory of our lady. Mother Petrusaka, pray for us, and Father, and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.